Hey guys, welcome back to Reverse 1999. In today's video, I'm going to go through my top five tips for beginners. Now, this is focused at really early game players who haven't really played the game, don't know what's going on. We're going to cover things around stamina, summoning, uh, team and unit focus, campaign pushing, and also the wilderness. Uh, these are all key things that I think if you just get on top of these and play them right at the start, your account's going to feel a lot more comfortable and you're going to feel like you're in the right direction with what you're doing. So let's get into it with the first thing being stamina or what they call activity in this game. And there's a few things that I want to cover with it. So anytime you're doing something in the campaign, uh, unless it's like a story campaign stage, which doesn't cost you anything, uh, when you're farming resources and stuff like that, except for the fact that this one does give you two free daily runs in this one instance where you try and get some Psycube stuff. But besides that, most things are going to cost you stamina uh, or what, 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 what did I say to call it? Activity. So with this activity, the thing to note is when you level up your account, and you will do this quite quickly early on, uh, this account I started like four hours ago, maybe maybe longer, maybe six hours ago. Uh, this is on the JP server. And yes, I got the God roll on the JP server, but uh, unfortunately it was on JP server with the first account I rolled <laughs> and I will re-roll for hours and not get this. But what happens is when you level up, and as you can see, in four, six hours, I'm already level eight, you're going to get extra uh, activity, which you can see up here as well. Uh, and so you want to avoid overcapping that activity because it's standard in most gacha games. You don't want to overcap. So if you run out and you're about to pop some, because you do get these candies and you can purchase them with gems. Now, purchasing with gems is, once again, something I never recommend in these games um, because it's up to you. I often do it. Uh, at least for like one, but that's because that's what I prioritize in these games. I never like to tell people what to do with their gems, whether they should summon or buy stamina, because at the end of the day, it's a casual game. You do what you enjoy. Uh, but the thing is, if you're very close to getting the stamina, you need to do a run and leveling up your account. Just keep in mind, if you don't pop like a 120 jar of candy uh, to get 120 activity, and then you do one run and you've leveled up and then you're overcapped. So that's the first thing to do with that. The other thing is to pay attention attention to your timers on the candy. It's always nice to have these stored. Honestly, it's kind of annoying that they have timers on these, uh, but you can check them there. You can also go to your warehouse uh, and check consumables, and it will tell you the timer on each individual thing. As you can see, we've got this one that doesn't have a timer, but a lot of them will have timers. So make sure you do not let these things expire uh, because that would be incredibly painful. But that's the main things around stamina. Leveling up gives you more. You have candies that can get you more. You can also buy more with stamina but the candies do have some time limits so obviously don't let those fall out moving on from that i want to talk a little bit about summoning now summoning i've done this in some other videos but i wanted to go through this and i wanted to highlight the fact that yes we have the beginner banner now the beginner banner you are guaranteed to get one of these three from after 30 summons, you get one of them. You can get it early and the banner will go away, I believe is the way the system works. But then we have two other banners. Now, these two banner banners are both standard banner characters, meaning they can get pulled off the standard banner because if we go here and we go to rate details, uh, you can see A Knight and Sotheby are both on this one. So these are both standard banner characters. And then in the future, we will get exclusive characters, which is new characters that aren't yet on the standard banner. But all, um, all banners with a rate up character will share a pity. So for instance, if you look at my record here, uh, and you'll see there's regular banner and time limited banner. You can see this is the one, uh, this is the Sotheby banner that I summoned on. But before I summoned on that, I was summoning on the one for A Knight. And as you can see, I had a godly 10 pool <laughs> where I got three six stars. But um, essentially, they do share the pity. So just keep that in mind. These banners do share the pity. Anything with a rate up character, essentially a time limit on it um, is going to have, and you can see the time limit, just my head's almost blocking it. Uh, but don't you? are going to share a pity and the standard banner is on its own so i sort of avoid the standard banner personally you can do it for reroll purposes you can look at my video where i talk about who to reroll for and the, the reasons you may want to summon on the standard banner but in general i like to stick to these because even when you're summoning on these for standard banner rate up characters you're building pity towards the next new character that isn't on the standard banner so that is the first thing about summons you really want to pay attention for that but the other thing is as you summon and also when you do your uh, daily and weekly quests 
and you're going to get these cassettes. Uh, and at the people, people bag me for the way I say this. I think it's my accent. You, you guys think about the, what you think the people thought I was saying. But in the pawn shop, dude, I can't, I can't not, th I can't not think I'm saying it wrong now. But in the pawn shop. <laughs> If my accent's killing on this. You can buy summons. Now you can buy the you can buy up to 10 of these every month. So this is what you want to prioritize buying with these logs. Um, now you can buy some over here as well. Uh, or you can go for specifics. Now these are ones here that are gonna cost you the gold ones, um, which I believe are ones you get when you summon a six star. So those those ones, uh, but the base one. You definitely want to try and pick these ones up, uh, the 10 summons every month, as your priority before you do anything else. But that pretty much rounds us up for summons. The next one's going to be team and unit focus. Now, I did a more in-depth team guide for beginners, uh, which I'll leave linked in the description if you want to go more in-depth. But in general, just as a blanket idea, what I like to recommend is aiming for, you know, focusing on three units. Now, there is one exception. You can level a few units up because we do have these tasks where for Sinead, Apple, uh, Eagle, and also this chick whose name I can't say, um, you can basically get a refund. So once you level them up to level 23, you get all the resources for leveling them to level 23 refunded. So if you're a new cat player and you just want to experiment with characters, get a feel for the game, feel free to do those characters up to level 23 because you will get refunded all those sources. And if you were going to do one of them, which, you know, Sonetto is not a bad character for most people, you can level her to 23. And then if you do that, you basically get her refund, put it into the next one, put it in the next one, and put in the next one, so on and so forth. You get the idea. I didn't do it because I had a team sorted, but you can do it. They're essentially free level ups to 23 for new players. But what I like to focus on is having a sustain unit, a supportive unit that, you know, helps you with like helps you damage dealer deal damage whether it's debuffs whether it's buffs and then a main damage dealer and what i like to prioritize is leveling up my damage dealer first now you may think that my a knight looks like he's lower level because he's level 26 these guys are 30 the difference is i have raised his insight once which is the limit break which brings his level cap to 40 whereas the others you can see here th that's level 30 of 30 the catch is when you raise their insight and limit break them they go back to level one but A Knight is still at a higher investment than the others, even though his level is lower. You'll get used to it, but that, that's the way the inside system works. But I like doing my DPS as the first one that I level up uh, to let them sort of carry the damage and then sort of bring the others up. Now, I don't have a healer on my team currently. I've just got Tenant for the shields. Uh, it's working perfectly fine for me in these early stages. Eventually, I will put in a healer, but I like to focus on three units uh, at the start. And then your fourth unit, which goes into that reserve spot, you can work on that, but don't stress too hard. For me, eventually, Tenant will swap over into my sub slot and then I'll probably put uh, on this account i'm not going to play it anymore because global's about to happen uh but i would put sotheby in as my healer but yeah in your teams damage support and sustain and then i would like to focus on my dps first you'll get a feel for where your team's lacking as well uh when you start playing through and you can adjust based on that so the next tip, I think that's three things we went through. We've gone through stamina, summoning, and team and unit focus. The next one is going to be pushing campaign uh, because you want to push the campaign. That, is, that wants to be your top priority because campaign is what's going to unlock so many features for you in the game. Uh, for instance, when we look to the resource farming, like I mentioned over here, this is where you're going to get Psycube materials uh, and they're going to be important because Psycubes are like your weapons in this game. And each day you get two free attempts at this. So getting those two free attempts is going to be important. You obviously want to use those every day, but you also don't want to like dilly dally around in the campaign and not get there for three days. Now, I believe this unlocks at stage two 2-10, which is a really safe place to get to. Doesn't take too much grinding to get there. Um, if we look at mine, I'm I'm into chapter three already. It doesn't take too much. But the other thing you unlock is obviously going to be your insights. Uh, th there's a lot of things that you do unlock along the way. But the other one that is bonus resources is going to be the artificial SOM. Now I say SOM because I I, ca I can't say this word. Somnambulism. Dude. <laughs> 
It's brutal. But this thing, you can see the rewards reset in three days. Uh, this is like a progression. If you've played Honkai Star Rail, think Memory of uh, Memory Chaos or um, Hall of Memories. Uh, and you're going to get these extra currencies that you can use uh, to go ahead and, and purchase stuff in the shop. So you want to do this as well. So pushing campaign, unlocking this so you can push this, especially if Global's the same when it drops, which I'm assuming it will be. And it's only got three days. Depending on when you start, just look at how long's left. So pushing that stuff and then be able to push all the time limited stuff as fast as possible is going to be really nice for your account progression from when you start your account. So pushing campaign uh, is definitely something that you want to push early on and have as your main focus. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is don't go repeating resource stages uh, early on unless it's part of your reroll process, which is a whole nother thing. But try not to, uh, try not to farm uh, repeat stages too early. Uh, just go into the next stage, the next stage, the next stage. And then if you're finding yourself a little bit stuck, maybe go to something else and keep farming, the like doing once the next harder stage of everything, because that will get you a lot of premium currency. It'll get you a lot of gaps filled. And then once you're really stuck, that's when you can go back. And if you want to level characters, you can farm whatever stage you can comfortably clear. Uh, but essentially I like to focus on new things first, get them all cleared once, uh, cause then you're getting the gems, you're not wasting that stamina essentially and then maybe you know you get more achievements you get more experience and then you can keep leveling up so that is the campaign and and sort of farming covered in that one that is four tips done with stamina summoning team focus uh campaign pushing and now the final one i want to mention is wilderness now this is another reason you do want to push the campaign to unlock the wilderness but if you're like me, I normally hate these kind of systems in games. I, I just, these don't synergize well with me, but you have you really want to do this if you want to speed up your count. If you don't care, if you're playing super casually, don't stress. If you don't like these things, don't worry. Honestly, this one's quite enjoyable compared to other ones I've done in the past, but essentially this is where you're going to craft some land. Now you can edit wilderness, and when you go in to edit your wilderness, uh, you're going to get all these missions. Now place 20 islands with plants. So as you can see here, I just got to look through my islands, find anything with plants, and place it. It doesn't matter where you place it, you just got to find stuff with plants, place it. Now as you progress through the game as well, you will unlock more um, and if I go here I can find some other lands and then I can put more with these these pieces on them and I can get to that 20. Basically you just want to follow doing these missions. Now then you will eventually get to a mission that says it wants to upgrade your uh, pale, pale hole or whatever it is which is basically your main facility. Now when you get to that it's basically you got to keep progressing through campaign and when you get through a certain campaign stage it will give you the material that you need to basically upgrade it and that's how you will continue on so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to jump over here into the lakeside forest i'm going to grab this i'm going to keep placing these uh and then we should be just about done there okay so now that we've done that one uh you can see that place 50 islands with the wilderness so i, I gotta keep grinding this but you, you'll get to a point where you can upgrade this bad boy uh, but to do that, you basically just need to push campaign. So if you get stuck there, I got stuck and I was like, what is this thing? How am I meant to do this? Uh, but yeah, you've just got to keep pushing through campaign and eventually you'll get the stuff to do it. But the reason you want to do this is because if we go back here uh, and we go back out of the uh, customization zone, you can see that the paleo hole, that's the thing that you need to upgrade. But it also does give you some AFK rewards here that you can go ahead and get. It's also got crafting involved. I may have to do a full guide on this thing in the future, but essentially you can upgrade the AFK loot that you get from all these different things. You can see here, uh, you can upgrade it with these resources that you get along the way as well. So there's a lot of things you can do in here. Essentially, you just want to early game unlock it do the missions get as far as you can progressed in it uh, and then just keep up to date with it because it is going to give you some good afk loot eventually it will become like a real idle thing but early on you just want to maintain it as well as you can uh, maybe i'll do a deeper guide into it in the future if you guys think you need but i feel like i covered it pretty decently in a summary form there but that is going to be it for my top five tips uh like i said those things should get you pointed in the right direction uh for just general playthrough and what to focus on but as always guys thanks for watching hope you have an awesome day and i look forward to seeing the next one cheers